In this video, we'll take a look at how you can create a Splunk pipeline without using any SPL2 code. This is especially helpful for users who are not familiar with SPL2 but want to get started with Splunk data management. In this demo, we'll be creating an ingest processor pipeline to process Cisco ASA firewall logs. In order to do so, you can use the pipelines option on the home page and create a new pipeline. We'll be using a blank template but I also wanted to point out that there are several templates already baked into the product to help you get started with your pipeline building process. Next, let's create a partition so that the pipeline knows which of the incoming data to process when applied. You can use source type, source or host to partition your data. And I'll be using source type. Next, you can either upload your sample data using a file or create a snapshot. I've created a snapshot already for this demo, so we'll be using that. Next, let's select a destination for our pipeline so that the pipeline knows where to send the data once the data is processed. In this case, I'm sending my process data to a Splunk index, but in addition to a Splunk index, you can send your data to a metrics destination or Amazon S3. Now that we have pre-configured our pipeline, we are ready to create rules to process our data. What you see on my screen right now is a pipeline editor and in the bottom you will see the sample logs or the unfiltered logs being previewed. As we create new actions in our pipeline you'll be able to preview how those actions apply to your logs. Let's see how this works. First let's extract the IP address that's there in the beginning of the log. To do so, I'll be using the extract function from actions menu. In order to do so, you can either write your own regular expressions or leverage our pre-built library functions to extract different fields from your logs. Now that I've extracted the IP address, let's click apply. You will now notice that a new field has been added to your preview for the IP address. Now that I have my timestamp and IP address, I would like to go ahead and trim the data until percentage ASA-6 to make it look more clean. You can select the data you would like to trim until and right click on that selection to trim your data. Now let's extract the message IDs that are in our logs. We can use the same extract function from actions that we used to extract the IP addresses. Message ID in this case is just an integer. So I'll use the integer function from my library and extract those message IDs. Now you can also give it a nice name to add more context when a new field is added. Now that I have my message IDs, I can use that field to filter out low value logs from my data. In order to filter your logs, you can use the filter module in the actions menu and give it the field that you would like to use to filter your logs. Here, I'm giving it a specific message ID. Let's try to understand why. What you will notice is that that particular message ID carries all the UDP messages in, a, in my logs which are not really that useful for my analysis. So what I would do is I would go ahead and exclude those logs so that I can filter out low value logs and only send quality data to my Splunk index. You'll notice this in my preview where log messages with those message IDs are no longer present. Next, I would like to remove any sensitive information that's present in this logs so that I can share it with a broader team. What you will notice is that the user IDs are shown in plain text on these logs. Let's go ahead and mask these user IDs. The user ID in this case is nothing but a word. We can use the same library functions we used previously to extract the username and replace them with a string called redacted. Let's apply this change and now you'll notice that in my preview, the user IDs are no longer being shown. Now that I have 
filtered out low value logs and masked all the sensitive information, I'm ready to apply this pipeline onto my Cisco ASA logs that are going into Splunk. To apply the pipeline, first let's save the pipeline and give it a nice name that adds more context on what this pipeline is doing. Once you've saved your pipeline, it will prompt you with a message asking if you want to apply the pipeline or not. Go ahead and click Yes Apply. Once your pipeline has been successfully applied, you will see a green check mark right next to your pipeline. Now that our pipeline is active, let's make sure the data is being sent properly into our Splunk index. Let's update the index name to the index that we used to send our processed data into Splunk. Now, as you can see on my screen, we have a much more cleaner version of the Cisco ASA logs. This concludes the demo. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this was helpful and you learned something new today.